Welcome to our next talk by Javier Lazo on start of DDD when you have a monolith. Please welcome the speaker. Thank you. Can you hear me right? I'm going to start my own timer. Thank you. <laughs> so, according to Wikipedia, a monolith, as you can read in the screen, is a single tier software application in which the user interface and data access code are combined into a single platform from a single, in a single program from a single platform, right? But we usually have this big ball of mud. Um, how many of you have worked with legacy code? How many of you are not developers here? A few. Nice. So welcome to this talk of starting with DDD when you have a monolith. My name is Javier Alasso. I'm an engineer on biotechnology and also a software developer. I work as a senior developer at ThoughtWorks. And I hope you enjoy this because everybody knows that architecting applications, it is very, very, very hard. Conway establishes that the system designs are a true reflection of how an organization is structured. And if the organization has a silo, the structure of each team that will be isolated from the rest. For example, in here, you have one part of the, <laughs> the team that is like the developer's team. I used to say that we have the front end and the back end, but it's most likely the technology that differs from them. But the database administrators and the infra team are going to be always outside. And what happened with this is like, what happened if I need to create a new API, if I need a new service? Each team will need to go to their own roadmaps and check. OK, I'm a front end developer, and I'm going to ask, hey, please, back end devs, can you do an API for me? Because I really need to reach my date. And the back end team is going to say, well, in our roadmap, I can deliver that for the next month, which is not great. So what are we looking for usually? It's the silver bullet of architecture. There are different types. We have monoliths, we have microservices, and on each of, the, each of them we have different types. We have layered, we have microkernel, then we have microservices, event-oriented architectures, and as you see here, always depends. I'm a consultant, so I'm going to say it depends a lot of times per day, per hour maybe. Now I'm going to go deep around the monoliths. As I say, we have two types. Uh, the one is that is modular is much easier to escalate because it's divided in packages. It's easy to evolve. Maybe we can extract some services, which is pretty nice for us as a developers. But the reality is the big ball of mud. And why we have a big ball of mud? Maybe because we don't have tests. Why do we don't have tests? Because we don't need them. This is a very old monolith. Why we need tests? We know that we are developing the best way that we can. This is the best project. We don't need tests. The tech depth. Maybe I'm developing a feature, and this feature needs to be done by the end of the month. So I tell the PO, hey, can we mark this as a tech dev so I can take it after? The PO is going to say, yeah, for sure, just finish. But what happened next? You never take the tech dev, and then it's another date that you need to go over. Hard to deploy. What happened with a monolith is that you deploy everything at once. You don't wait for a service to be deployed. If you deploy once, you need to deploy everything. What happens if some part fails? Well, sorry. Legacy system, as we say, the legacy system usually are very hard because can escalate. And the CI CD process is not implemented. Usually in big organizations, we have uh, some teams that are very old. They're not updating in their technology. So they really don't know what to do when you say, oh, CI CD. Yeah, I've heard that. I've, I've read something about it. But there's no culture there. Monitoring, 
what is monitoring. The only people who monitors a big ball of mud is the old people in the company because they know what is happening. But if you as a new member of the team goes and say, hey, there is an error, okay, uh, show me the graphs, let me monitor this, maybe there is a cyber event, you don't know. So. We don't have also no boundaries in the services. What happened? Who is the administrator for a service that I need? Who is in charge of this? I need to do a change. Oh, yeah, you just take it. That's enough. So our big ball of mud is constructed. This is fine. It's OK. We know. We work on this. If you are a consultant, you are like most likely to be in this situation every time, which is amazing. So in here comes our friend and our savior, because it's ZD, the most powerful tool in the universe. And what the business says. OK, it says, we have a company problem. We start using DDD, and we have this perfect and amazing app because you're using DDD, right? This is what is like the innovation now. That is what everybody's using. And also, we are going to use this Spotify model, too, because it's what the cool companies do. But of course, that is not real. Not because you are just using DDD is going to like fix all your problems. We know that. Not a silver bullet. You see the silver bullet yesterday in the party. So everything can fade if we don't apply some tactical patterns, but also we need to model our system. If you, I don't know if you know this cool uh, DDD crew, you can check the website later. And they have this amazing uh, graph of domain driven design starter modeling process, which is divided in different parts, but it's everything iterative. Everything is moving, it's constant. The first two you align and discover because it's fundamental part and we must understand what is happening here. By discovering, we can take initiative, such as even storming to understand the domains. What happens later if we decompose this uh, this part, and we try to check if we can find the domains and subdomain so we can connect. Then we do strategize and organize our teams around this bounded context. As you see, until here, we just have talked about the problems, about how we should approach to them, and what we need to do before even start thinking about coding. So then, we can define the roles and responsibility for bounded context. That's the part that we want. We don't want to like just have this big ball of mud forever. We need to set the boundaries for each service. And at the end, we have to code. Put everything in practice and start coding. Even when I tell it as a linear process, it's not. There are a lot of arrows. This can be changed. This should be uh, played before one another. But at the end of the day, the process should be followed in the best way possible. It's not like I'm going to give you, OK, this is the recipe. Just follow it, and everything is going to be fine. No, you need to iterate everything. So. To make it more interesting, let's apply it to my monolith. My last, one of my clients was a very nice airline based on South America. So they wanted to bring better experience for the clients, for the employees, and of course, increase their revenues. One of their values they posted in the website like uh, was that they differentiate customer experience, they accelerate innovation and deliver velocity, they untap revenue opportunities, and they wanted to improve operational performance and reduce cost. This, uh, this problem happened before COVID. Uh, we had a um, new CTO. And 
the online presence, presence was not very like common there. So what happened is like, okay, currently, if I cannot check in through my phone, I got very mad. But for a local airline, before COVID, checking in in the counter was super common. And here was the same. The new CTO wanted to go all digital, and they have this big ball of mud written on Perl. How many of you know Perl? You need to teach me, because it was awful. <laughs> and of course, didn't have any test. Everything that we deployed was like, we were praying, crossing fingers, and hoping that everything went well. We thought it happens because we needed to try to work with this monolith. And when we have these cyber events, there are at least three per year, I don't know, here in Europe, we needed to escalate the system for more than 1,000 servers because nobody knew what was happening on when we'll crash. So it was a great client, if you think about like the experience to try to start with DDD. So we call all these people because this new CTO wanted all digital and he heard about DDD, so he called us and we say, okay, let's do a very nice event storming, sorry. So we start putting some posts uh, around. Uh, so we discuss the flows, we bring the stakeholders, we bring architects, we bring everybody into conversation, technical leads, devs. The main idea was to have a common understanding of what was happening and what was the journey of the user. Because we do have our CTO, which was very involved with us. We have uh, a lot of technical leads. We also work with a lot of vendors. Everybody knew at some point what they need to develop. But why? Why you need to develop that part of the code? What is the problem that you are trying to uh, fix? What is the problem? Where are the domains? Where are the boundaries? Do you know the flow? Do you know the language? Do you know what is happening? That was tricky. So we start talking, we start coming around with some ideas. Uh, we really wanted to uh, involve the client with us so they can see by themselves what was their problem, how this can be like assessed. It was very important because when you have a common language, you are able to understand what are you developing, the why. You are not just, okay, yeah, I'm gonna like create a button. Oh yeah, it's gonna take me maybe to, to the payment page. Okay, but which part of the payment page? Uh, the seats, the ticket, the ancillaries? I don't care. But what happens if I understand the problem? Maybe I can abstract from that. I'm going to create a button. Maybe I'm going to create a library. Maybe I'm going to extend. Maybe I can be able to really see where in the journey I am and what are my responsibilities. What is the experience that I want? And here also we need to involve our architects. Usually they're outside of this world because they are sometimes the goddess of the company and they just give us rules. But no, they needed to be on board in these conversations. So in this example, at the beginning, the developers, uh, we had a lot of problems on communication because we were just telling them like, oh yeah, there's an order, then the payment gateway, and then the processor, and then SMPT service, and everyone in the business part was, what is that? What is a microservice? Why, what does that mean? Uh, that the CFO was like, how that is gonna help me? I'm part of the finance team, why I need to know this? And you do. You need to be part of this. So at the end of the conversations and a few days with a lot of post-its when because it was really fun and take pictures and translate them to the computer, uh, we ended up having a common language where everybody understands that where is a payment and is processed correctly. 
the voucher is going to be sent to the customer's email. That was very much understandable for everybody. We can go deeper. Yeah, but maybe we not, don't need to go deeper with some part of the business. Maybe we can if they want to, but don't deny the opportunity of that. At least we didn't. They, after that, went to every showcase. So, after that, we found out the fun part, some domains. So, we found that we have the ordering, the redemption and loyalty, we have check-in and boarding, and trip management. Wow, we found the domains. Okay, hard part now. Let's make it a bundle context. Okay, okay, this is taking form. Okay, we can do this. So we found in, in ordering the ancillaries, fulfillment, shopping, booking, we have some payments, redemption. Sorry if these terms aren't very good. I will post a wiki maybe later. We have boarding pass, reservation management, then for trip management, check-in, boarding pass. Okay. We understand, we have set our boundaries, we have our bounded context, we have our domains. Now we need to start working. Because, okay, that was fun. Nice, well done. You did the event storming, you found out everything in here. Now we need to start working. What happened here? Limited resources. So, where will you start? You need to choose something that might be painful, that needs to be giving you a lot of value, but also needs to be attached to the context on where you are. Uh, maybe uh, because this CDO want to go online, so we should do check-in online, and just everybody can go, and with their face, they're going to check in. Mm, OK, we don't have as many resources. So with this, we already have everyone in, everybody on board in the conversation. Everybody knew the domains, everybody knew the, the journey of the user. Now we can start putting this together and choosing. OK, what is going to go first? Trip management. OK, a lot of effort. Value, mm, sort of. Yeah, OK, we have some stakeholders there. Redemption and loyalty, okay, uh, people can exchange their points for flights and that is going to decouple our monolith, it gives us more value. Mm, yeah, and slow effort, nice. Okay, no. Uh, Check-in and boarding, this was before pandemics. Nobody cares if you need to go to the counter and do check-in. They're going to print your voucher and you're just going to go and get it. Like, it wasn't this uh, huge uh, change in the mentality. Now you can, in, in like current times, you can put your passport near your uh, phone and then NFT is going to like check in for you, which is super cool. But for this time, not really. But what happened with Offer ordering, yeah, that was a pain. This very nice domain was a very huge pain for us. Uh, it was a lot of effort. This Perl system was very coupled to this. Uh, but OK, we choose, at the end of the day, this domain. OK, yeah, we don't have many resources. Let's start with a bounded context. What is the most painful part of this domain? It is booking. Why? It's booking because when you book a flight online at this time, the website crashed and they charge you in your credit card. So it was super painful. For cyber days, uh, you couldn't escalate like in a good way. You couldn't monitor. A lot of reservations were lost. It was a lot, a lot of pain to work in this booking feature, but at the end of the day, it was very good for us because we needed to. We put a lot of effort. It took us around eight months to the first deliverable. But to choose that, we need to define some sensible defaults 
to start working on it. Because we need to, now, okay, yeah, we have the domain, uh, we have the bounded context, we have the resources, and now we need to choose the sensible defaults. How are we going to start migrating this monolith? Okay, so for this, we create a very easy cheat sheet. We start with the first part. Okay, so do you have a big ball of mud? Easy to answer. Yeah, we do. Can you change your existing solution? I'm not fluent in Perl, so maybe not. Maybe there are some other fancy things around uh, that can help. Um, in place refactor wasn't very good. Is the solution well structured? Mm, maybe not too good. Is the business on board? Yes, it is. Is the domain functionality well understood? It is. What happens if not? I'm just going to stop here. Maybe you don't need to change. What happens if you don't understood the functionality and you start just changing? Maybe the edge cases are going to be out and it's going to fail again. Even when you put all the resources and you create these very fancy microservices and everything. Then what happens if the personnel is not trained? Why are you going to change if you are not training your developers? They are from your company. You want them to evolve as your company does. So they need to be trained on what is going to come out next. They know the context now. After all these conversations, everybody knew why they need to uh, work in one or another part of the solution. We have this new team. This was before team topologies, but we tried to do something like that. Uh, you have a strong entrepreneurs. So in this case, we came up with a, a strangle fig pattern, which was very good for us. Uh, the hardest part was the database, because it was sure across all services. But I think I can do a whole talk about just databases. Then we need to see, OK, we know the pattern. Now, we need to see what is going to be in the code. What is the best approach that we need to take? And for that, there is this amazing um, value stream mapping that we use, usually to see what features are where to start. Doesn't mean that the others aren't. I just highlight a few. Uh, at the beginning, for example, we plan to start with, uh, OK, we will have trend modeling right after we model our system and right after we finish uh, the first release of our service. Then uh, to validate one sensible default that we will have always in our code, at this time is going to be the uh, analysis, the static code analysis, because it's very important. Pre-deployed test. Please do tests. Everybody of us wanted to do tests. Um, we do a TDD usually and pair programming. So doing tests and having the ability to see, OK, I know if this is failing, all the system will crash or the tests are passing. I know this is working was very cool. And everybody was super like on board on the idea of testing. It took us a lot of dojos of testing and stuff like that to really like feel confident. Um, we also do mutation testing. I don't know if you know mutation testing. Any of you use them? OK, so uh, it's like when you have some conditions, the if conditions, and they pass, and then you do mutation tests, and they reverse it. And all the mutants should be killed. So it's very fun. <laughs> um, we also have some contract testing, of course. We really, we were really on board with testing. We, we, I'm, I'm very excited with testing because I love tests. Um, then we're our API documentation. Also, that was documentation. So what I'm gonna say, 
post-deployed test. Of course, that was a sensible default for us. We needed to see how the customer interacts with this application. We tried, in this time, we use a cucumber and some Cypress. Uh, we have performance testing because, as I said before, this functionality was for booking. And we needed to see, okay, what happened is a big load what happened for cyber days. So we needed to test this uh, every time, at least every 10 days, okay? Could be better, but it is what it is. Monitor. Monitor is like, I think the base of uh, this kind of work, you need to monitor what is happening because data can help you to take decisions. That is gonna, B, what is going to drive you to, okay, let's change this, let's improve this part, uh, okay, there is an error, where's the error? It's not going to tell you, hey, I'm here in the line 26, no, but at least you're going to be able to understand what it is. So monitoring is very important. And also tracing, because if you trace, you can find the error easily. At the end of the day, what was our final structure? We start with a monolith, a big ball of mud, really. And we ended up with a monolith, big ball of mud, and a few microservices. <laughs> because, of course, limited resources. You can move some parts, but you need to prioritize, OK? I'm not going to tell you, yeah, DDD hero came and everything went well. No, we have much better understanding. We're still doing a lot of work. Uh, the business in this part is still want us to do a greenfield and delete everything and start from scratch. We say no. They did it, sorry, <laughs> but it wasn't us. Uh, but still, uh, we really understand what is happening. Some parts of our services are still in this big ball of mud because it was pretty old and it's still in refactoring. Uh, but the current experience is much better. It's related to the customer, it's related on what the journey is, the developers know what is their job, what is their part in that journey. Some refactoring resources that you can read. My favorite is this one from Neil Ford, Rebecca Parsons, and Pat Kua uh, are very good. And you can see a lot of patterns that will help you because, as we say many times, there is no silver bullet for each system. Our systems are unique. Sometimes the solutions will work for us at a certain point, but we need to customize also. And we need to take decisions based on our reality. If we were like just going before everything of this journey, like just saying, oh yeah, let's do a mobile, let's go through that, okay, let's make a functionality so Alexa can book for ourselves. And just doing that, maybe the airline wouldn't be having the good numbers that it had right after our change. But how do we maintain this architecture over time? Because that's also something that we need to be able to catch. We can use C4 diagrams. Uh, so I don't know if you are, any of you use C4 diagrams? Oh. We need more. <laughs> okay, so C4 diagrams are a very cool way to model our systems. They have four phases. The system context, the container diagram, the component, and the code. That's why I put the molecules at the end, not because I'm a scientist. So the main idea of this is uh, that you can explain your model in five minutes, an hour, five hours. Usually in our systems, or usually in my projects, we just go from the system context to the container diagram. The component and the code change too fast, so we usually don't use it as much. And still, it's a good exercise if you can do it at least once in your own system. 
I really recommend them. You have the links over there, so if you want to try them. Uh, there are some tooling too that you can use to like model by you, but if you are able to understand what is happening in your system, it's going to be much better too. Test your architecture. The only code that I have in my presentation, but it's very worth it. Uh, these are architecture tests. This framework called ArgUnit help us to avoid the, the definition of architecture be drift over time. Because it's a set of guidelines and they're automated. For example, in here, um, the services might only be accessed by controllers. Persistent may only be accessed by services. Easy to read, easy to implement. They already have uh, this framework for Go, for Kotlin, for Node. And I think that's it for now. You can check out their website because you can put this on the pipeline. You can put it in a uh, pre-commit hook so the people in your team is not going to have such a hard time following the rules. Because what happens if I'm a junior dev in a team and I know nothing about layer architecture? OK, I'm going to start reading. OK, how should I implement this uh, fancy, for me as a junior dev, um, architecture? I can go and check the tests. OK, it's here. This does not have dependency on this. OK, that is going to help me a lot to really deliver what I need to deliver in the way that does not drift over time and having a good architecture or at least a good uh, structured architecture. Don't skip them. Of course, if you start skipping this test, better to be deleted. Also, we have architectural decision records or ADR. This is a documentation that you put in your source code. The main idea is to tell anybody that is onboarding in your project or the rest of your coworkers what do you do. Maybe you are doing some spikes on change your database from MySQL to GCP. That happened to me once. So we needed to do some spikes and check, OK, what was the decision? Why we change? What was the hardest part? Where was the, co the consequences? The decision was positive, wasn't. You put it here. It's very important to have it because it can save you time at the end of the day. Or also can be a good way of, say, OK, I took this um, decision of changing this part of the code, of this part of the architecture. I choose to use this, um, uh, what do I call it, architectural test, because uh, we really didn't want to be drift over time. OK, let's do this. Let's document it. And then what are we going to do? How are we going to evolve? You just read it here. To summarize a little bit, so we have a few key concepts for DDD. We have in one side the problem domain, we have the solution domain, at the top we have a strategic, tactical, where we define the why and what. But if we kind of zoom and start thinking about what is in there. What happened in one side? We have M and storming, domain storytelling. We have supporting the subdomains. Then in the part of tactical, we have entities, value objects. We have factory, app services. It's very important that we see that DDD is like a philosophy. It has tactical patterns. Doesn't mean that if you are not doing everything that the blue book says, you are wrong. No, not at all. That's my idea. But you are sure that you are doing a good job when you understand the problem, when you can uh, see where are you, what is what you do, what is the value that you give to the problem, the problem or opportunity on your team. After uh, our work, 
with this airline client. We start doing some fun parts about the Conway's maneuver. We inverse it. So now we didn't have this front, this devs team where there were some UI persons back in. We start doing some checking team, payments, booking team, the boarding team. So we try that the way our teams were uh, defined reflects the architecture that we want to. We didn't want that every team start doing microservices that are micro but or are too many. We really want to set boundaries, like they know the part, again, in which part of the journey are they. Why this was very good for us, for our teams, is because we were able to adapt to change. Um, this haven't happened yet, but COVID happens. So when COVID hits and everything went online, our journey of demodularization, of extracting parts was already started. So it was much easier for us to keep going, to make everything available for the users, to make everything more easily for the developers. So the adaptability to change using this approach was a huge deal breaker for us. And from the technical perspective, we wanted to have the technical business view in a way where um, if you go into the mountain and look at the city, you are able to see different part of the city. You see the school district, you see the hospitals, you see where are the industry, um, the place where the people live and everything. We wanted to translate that into code too. We wanted to be able to abstract ourselves on what are we doing and see from the abstract like, okay, this part is doing this, this is that, and that. So we can be on board at least at high level with everybody in the company. I wanted you to take this as encourage for you to start learning and asking the whys in your companies and how you can improve the understanding for everybody. And that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>